Boom! All right, we're going to talk about character today. Um, another topic that's one of those abstract, kind of deep topics that we don't really talk about much as humans. Um, it's obviously very important. I mean, you know, we all know good character versus bad character. Uh, we know we all want to have good character. We all know people who have bad character. Um, and we probably haven't given much thought on what is really good character and what is actually bad character, as in, you know, at a kind of a deeper level, kind of really just trying to understand it or explain it. Um, most people, if you ask them, hey, explain to me character or like what is somebody's character or how do you find or how do you define somebody's character, they'll, you know, they'll first kind of start thinking about actions. Uh, well, you know, that person donates, uh, so maybe they're generous. Um, actions don't mean, uh, uh, actions and, and, and characters are, are two different things, of course. Um, even personality and characters are two different things. Actions are a reflection of your character, but they can be very deceiving. Um, I'll give you an example. So a generous person. A generous person will want to, is naturally inclined to donate. Well, a person who just donates doesn't have to be naturally inclined to donate. They might just have chosen to donate for other reasons. Uh, comes back to like intention and stuff. So actually, before we get into a further explanation, let me just kind of explain something called involuntary suggestions. So you get, we all get these involuntary suggestions that come into our mind. They're good and they're bad. They come from different sources, angelic, demonic, and psychic, and intellect. Um, but regardless, we all get these involuntary suggestions that are always coming into our mind, and our brain is trying to process them. Our intellect is processing them. Now, those thoughts and those suggestions come into us, and they go through four stages. The four stages they go through are important to understand to understand where character lies in this whole thing or to understand what character really is. So the first stage is these involuntary suggestions are coming into our mind. Okay, They come into our mind and we have first, uh, first is the receiving of the message. Stage two is our natural inclination towards it. So are we inclined, were you inclined to want to do it or are you inclined to uh, to not do it? Do you see what I mean? So you get an involuntary suggestions. Uh, so you should donate. Or you know somebody comes and asks you, hey, donate. If you're naturally inclined to donate, before you even think about should I donate or not, your body, as your whole bo your whole being, your intellect, your soul, whatever, um, has a natural inclination towards it. If if so, if that's your character, then you will almost automatically, without much thought or deliberation. Do it. Do you see what I mean? Um, if you have a character that's uh, 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 devious or deception is is, is part of your um, uh, 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 part of your character that you have. It's, it's obviously a bad character. Then you know when an opportunity comes to take advantage of somebody or to deceive someone, and that and an involuntary suggestion comes into your mind to you know to oh yeah you should deceive this person because you know you can get more advantage out of yourself or you can take advantage of this person. You have an, an inclination to do it. It doesn't mean that you will actually do it. You have this natural inclination to want to do it, but stage three, which is where you deliberate and you contemplate and you make an intention or you decide what you're gonna do, stage three might have been, no, if I deceive this person, then you know what, I, the chance I can get caught, so I'm not gonna do it. Okay, so you do so you don't end up doing it, and, and stage four is the actual action, the execution. So you chose not to do it, but what was the inclination of your natural stuff, your natural tendency, your natural inclination towards that suggestion before you thought about it. That's a reflection of your character. So we're going to be a few more examples. So, um, uh, actually, no, I'm not going to give you another example. But if you are honest about what your own character is, as in if you're honest about what your own inclination is towards that suggestion that came into your mind. And if you can stop yourself before you even deliberately think about it and see, do, did I naturally want to do it or not want to do it? And if you can be honest about what you actually are feeling, that's when you can recognize what your character is and only then you can do something about it. Do you see what I mean? Um, and now I'm kind of getting transition to the next part, which is how do we fix our character? How do we change our character? Is it even possible to? It is possible to change your character. It is difficult. There's no doubt. It's talked about by many philosophers and whatnot to say that changing your character is not an easy thing. Um, however, it is possible. And then they give you different avenues on how to change it. 
the first and most easiest way, and, and, and the number, of recomm number one recommended way, I guess you could say, to change your character is to hang around people who have the character that you want. Okay? So if you are a coward person and you want courage, you got to hang around people who you see that have courage. And uh, just literally being just around them and in their, in their natural environment or whatever it is, uh, you will start taking on some of their characteristics. Um, if you are a lazy person and you, uh, or, or you have gluttony where you, know, you eat in excess, you do everything in too much in excess, uh, and, and you want to have a character where you, know, you have restraint over yourself and you can control you know, uh, what you do, You've got to hang around people who, who have self-control or restraint as, a, as part of their character. Um, and, you know, it's not just the fact that, you know, um, being around them is just going to change you um, because that might be a reflection of the character. Because I said, just because you see it in their actions, it doesn't mean that that's a reflection of their character. So just because you see somebody donating, uh, it doesn't mean that that person is a generous person as well. right? So you have to be really careful when you're looking at actions. If a person is donating, but they're donating for the purpose of showing off, ostentation, that's what it's called. If they're donating for that purpose, then that's a really, th that person's character is not generosity or generous, that person's character is actually deception. The person is donating for the purpose of showing off, that's not a characteristic you want to take on to yourself. So, the first one does work if you really do know somebody's character, uh, the, the first theory of fixing your character, which is, you know, um, uh, but you know, surround yourself with people that have similar characteristics, uh, but it's not foolproof. Second way of doing it. The second way of changing your own character, um, and actually, you know, there's a prerequisite to even that. The prerequisite is that you gotta want to change your character. So you have to aspire to be there, you know, to be a better person, to have a better character. Uh, that's just a prerequisite. But the second way is temporarily doing certain actions that. Uh, are an opposite effect of, not an opposite effect, but that would balance, uh, or that would bring your character to the way you want it. Now, it's kind of like medicine. When you're sick, and you, when you're sick, as in like, you know, so say you do have a cowardness, and, and you know, you, it's not sickness, but I mean, you, you have cowardness as a character. The, the, what you have to do to fix cowardness is temporary. Does that make sense? It's kind of like medicine. If you're sick with the flu, you only take medicine until you get better and then you don't need that medicine anymore. So fixing a lot of character traits, especially bad character traits, it's almost like taking medicine. You have to do certain actions or certain things only until it's fixed and then after that then you get to work on just maintaining this balance uh, through actions and through other things. But there's certain actions you have to do to get yourself out of that bad character, to get yourself into a, like an equal character, I guess you could say, or sorry, a, a better character or a good character. Um, again, it's a much bigger topic on analyzing what the different characters are and then how to fix each of them. Um, and, and I'm not going to get into this video because I just want to give you a gist of it all. But once you start analyzing your own character, which, you know, especially through self-awareness or through self-analysis, which is key in this whole thing because, again, you know, you've got to literally stop yourself when an involuntary suggestion comes in into your mind and say, let me quickly reflect on this. What am I inclined towards? And, and this is often where you know people start doubting themselves too. You know, if if a bad thought comes into their mind, like, hey, you should go do this, and it's like an evil, like you should, you know, harm someone or whatever else, you know, and and you you're inclined to want to do it, you're going to start doubting yourself a little bit too. I mean, you're doubting your own character, or you're doubting your own personality, your goodness, your nature. Um, the good thing is, I mean, you can't really be judged on this because it's kind of like intention, right? Like, your intention is is, is is all like, like these are all like things that happen before the actual action happens. So, I mean, and because even the thoughts are involuntary, and your natural inclination towards it is also involuntary. You know, it's a reflection of your character, but it's involuntary. Uh, you can't really be judged for it. I mean, you shouldn't lose self confidence or something goes over it, but you should, of course, strive to try to better your character. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, fixing your character is a whole separate topic. The bigger topic, the deeper topic. It is really cool. Uh, you know, to try to become. A person with more self-control or uh, justice or you know to be a more just person to have more courage uh, more wisdom all those things uh, to be more generous uh, all those things are really good characters to have and I'd love to continue the conversation to kind of you know explain those things further and how to how to you know fix yourself or how to get those characteristics um, but that's more of a personal conversation uh, that we can have at any time um, I think I pretty much covered everything I wanted to uh, da -da -da -da. 
Did you show? Yep, I did. Okay, so uh, that's all. It, all this is um, something that I've learned through a lecture uh, regarding a book and a book itself called Marvels of the Heart. Um, really good book written like hundreds of years ago. Um, I suggest picking it up, but I mean, you could probably just YouTube and start reading different articles on this whole topic of character, which of course is so important. Anyways, that's my two cents on character. That's all for now.